Right guys, welcome back to the channel and I've got the Primaris Librarian here and tonight we're going to be painting this guy up. I've changed my setup again on the table. It's been a while since I've done like painting tutorials or painting long videos. Um, so yeah, basically uh, I've swapped. I'm right handed so I've put the lamp on the left to try and not get any shadows. Uh, and the camera's on the left of me as well. It is quite far away, um, I need to remember to stay within this area obviously when I'm painting. Um, but hopefully it's zoomed in enough that it's still clear and you can see it. So yeah, I did this in the um, Unbox and Build video and he's been sprayed up in Chaos Black and it's a, a quite a nice model. I was still tempted to put the helmet on but uh, for painting purposes I decided to go with um, the plain head. So first things first, uh, the first colour that we're going to do is we're going to start the armour and I start with Cantor Blue for the armour. So I've got some nice clean water here and I've got my palette. Now I'm not going to be a Duncan and uh, show you me basically brushing. He's, he's got a lovely setup with god knows how many cameras um, and all sorts around him. I unfortunately don't have that. I've got one camera one light and a desk. So I've got my kitchen roll ready and now Cantor Blue is a thick base colour brush, a base colour even. So with this colour you are going to apply, want to apply two thin coats. Sorry I had to get that in. So yeah basically thinning my base colour down. Cantor Blue is a very very thick paint and for base brushes I, I use army paint brushes I don't know why I do like army paint brushes so if we can get this right hopefully it should turn out pretty cool. I'm excited um, providing I get finished in this one set uh, sitting um, I'm actually going to be using them in a battle report tomorrow which is today by the time this video goes up which means that the battle report should be up tonight if you're watching this on the day of release providing I get everything done uh, on time so yeah I've had a look over his uh, rules, I have found the points for it on the Warhammer community site uh, I think he was 93 points base and then obviously you've got to pay for uh, the Force Sword uh, in addition. So apparently it comes in cheaper than the normal Librarian. I didn't look at the normal Librarian's points so I'm not sure how many points that is. So I'm not going to bore you with all of the details while I sit and paint the entire piece of each model. So. I'm going to continue doing the rest of the armour and we'll uh, come back shortly once we've uh, gotten all the Cantor Blue done. So there we go, I've done the Cantor Blue, I've done it on the sword and basically all of the armour and right in the legs. It does look quite bright on camera actually, um, but obviously it is a little bit darker, that's because I've got the light shining straight at it. So uh, the next step is going to be to apply some Draconoff Nightshade to all of the blue. Here, just to tone it down uh, a little bit and obviously pick out all of the recesses. So, my Draconoff seems a little bit thick, so I am just going to literally water it down ever so slightly. With the Draconoff, all you want to do is if I can get the camera back in focus. There we go. Just apply it very gently let it seep into all the cracks and crevices and what it'll do is the darkness of the nightshade will actually pick out all of the uh, recesses in particular on areas with a lot of detail like here with the hands and fingers as well so, we'll continue with that and uh, come back in a second. 
So there we go guys, the blue is all dry, but before we start highlighting the armour and everything up, I'm going to do the next colour, and that is all of the robes, and I'm going to do the robes Zandri Dust. I love Zandri Dust as a base colour, uh, four robes and everything, but the tone of it is absolutely fantastic, and with a tiny bit of Agraxa shade on, it comes out really nice. So, Zandri Dust is the colour that we're going for, and... Let's just get this thinned out a little. And then I'm going to slowly paint all of the robes in Zandri Dust. Zandri Dust is a base colour so it does cover very very well. But, not to quote Duncan again, but especially Zandri Dust over black you are going to need two coats of this. move around the side and I even do the uh, parchments in this colour as well so there we go and I'm going to continue doing this and we'll come back once I've done all of the robes. So there we go guys, I've done all of the robes in Zandri Dust, right the way around. And I've done the um, purity seals and a couple of skulls uh, and ribbons as well. Now the next stage is going to be to do a few bits of gold. I'm going to use Retributor Armour. You'd need to give it a really, really good shake. Um, metallics have a, a, a not preference, a tendency to separate when you leave them uh, alone for too long. So make sure you give it a really, really good shake. Uh, and there's a few bits and pieces that, I'm, that I am going to paint gold um, on the model. Um, the only thing I would say about the base colour is I'd probably use uh, some thinners or lamia medium just to thin it down ever so slightly. I wouldn't use water with Red Review Armour because it actually has gold flecks in it apparently so um, yeah I, I, I wouldn't use uh, water for that. So uh, there's a few bits and pieces that I'm going to paint gold, uh, mainly the chest plate. Uh, I'm going to do the horns and uh, especially the hilt on the sword. So, there we go. Now it's okay if you go ever so slightly out the edges. Because obviously when we come to do touch ups and stuff in a bit, we can touch that up quite easily. Oh, there's the chest plate. Other things that I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to do some of the locks, uh, the padlocks down here. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do the sword hilt and uh, the horns on the top of the chest, uh, the shoulder pad. So once again, we'll come back in a few seconds. All right, so there we go. There's the gold done. It's starting to look quite nice. You can see that I've done the uh, chest plate shoulder plate, the sword hilt and of course the emblem on there as well. Uh, next I need to start highlighting the blue before we get too many other colours on. So um, to highlight this blue I'm going to be using uh, Enchanted Blue which is a base colour but it's lighter than uh, the one that I've just used, Cantor Blue. So with this one I'm going to thin it down quite a bit because like I said with it being a base colour uh, it is quite thick but I need it quite thin um, to be able to essentially not quite wet blend or anything um, but have the paint thin enough so that it does 
I don't want it to look like I've just crayoned straight on onto the armor plates and stuff basically. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paint around about half of each armor panel uh, in this blue. So let's do the top of the armor plate there. I just realized the camera's out of focus, I am sorry about that. What you want to do is just pick out all of the flat surfaces, but leave all of the uh, crevices dark. So when you get down here, and I just realised I've missed a, a, a piece of banner there. So because I'm going for a top down highlight, I'll, I'll do the top half of the knee pad. And you can see what, especially on the crotch piece there as well, I've just painted the, the, the highest piece of it. Um, so that the crevices are, st are still quite dark. Uh, and the same with the shin plate, so we'll do the top half of it and across the uh, tops of the feet as well actually not doing that piece there might work in my favour because I can just paint over it so I'll continue doing this uh, and I'm going to do the arms as well And then of course the backpack and everything as well. So we'll come back in a few more moments. So there we go, we've completed the highlights on the blue and I've even blended the sword in a little bit there as well. And you can just see across the top here where I've done it with the lighter blue and the edge of the, the fist and the knuckles and in particular around the edge of the helmet there. So what I'm gonna do now is basically do the same thing again but do it much finer. Uh, and I'll, this time I'm going to do it with Altdorf Guard, but I'm only going to pick up the very, very edge of all of the blue armour. So Altdorf Guard isn't a base coat, so I'm only going to thin it ever so slightly. And I'm actually going to use the uh, small brush. And then, I'll just get this to focus for you guys. It's really hard painting with the mini about a foot away from your face. So just pick up the very, very edge like that. just kind of drag the edge of the brush along the edges like that and basically you want to do that on all of the uh, edges like that along the arm plates the hands um, and up the edge of the sword and everything as well so once again we'll come back in a few more seconds so there we go, if I stop knocking the camera and the blue is all nice and highlighted. Now there's a few bits and pieces of black that I need to touch up um, before we go ahead and start adding the last few base colours. So it's just very minor stuff uh, like the pipes here where I've gone over with the blue a little bit uh, and then I'm going to paint two bits of the backpack uh, as well. So the vents in here there we go and then I'm going to do this black because I'm going to be painting it silver I'm 
It's like the uh, power plant of the backpack. And just for good measure, oh, I'm really sorry, you're out of focus. Just for good measure, I'm going to paint that pipe black again. Because I will be doing it another colour very soon. There we go. The next colour that we're going to move on to is going to be a Warpstone Glow because I like green on my Blood Angels. Um, so I will be doing a lot of the pipes uh, Warpstone Glow. Right, so next up is going to be the pipes. And all the pipes I'm going to do these uh, Moot Green. It's a very dark, rich green. Oh, sorry, Warpstone Glow. Uh, it's a very dark, rich green, but I feel like it gives it, you know, it's got enough brightness in it that it really makes things pop and stand out. So we'll be doing that pipe there. Now I don't mind if I get a little bit of green on the uh, smaller pipes because I can touch the smaller ones up quite easily. But these ones definitely go on green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue around and do uh, these ones green as well. And interestingly enough this isn't far off being one of the last base colours. And then the purity seals themselves, I like my purity seals to be green. So there we go, I'll get the other side done and we'll come back in a couple of seconds. So there we go. We've got the green done and uh, next up we're going to be doing a little bit of silver so mainly some of the pipes on the top of his head here these ones and I'll be touching up the smaller ones as well as the keys and everything in here and a couple of parts on the backpack so let's get to that now for this colour I am using lead belcher I use lead belcher for all of me silver basin it's a nice thick paint with plenty of pigment in it, obviously you do want to water it down ever so slightly. So let's just get this back in focus. So we just paint the two smaller pipes again. Do that once silver. And then in here I'm just going to drag the brush ever so lightly across the ridges in there and it basically picks up all the surface and uh, there is parts of the, of the ridge. And then I'm pretty much going to do the same with the keys here so because I've used quite a lot of the silver paint on here this is almost like a, a heavy dry brush or a very guided dry brush where you can very carefully get paint in the right places by just dragging it along the surface. So we'll then do a couple of the hair or the pipes in the hair up here. I think one of them though I will do red, but uh, these two will do silver. 
and of course that piece around there. And for the moment, I don't mind doing a little bit on the um, what do you call it on the face because we will be doing the face again uh, in a few moments, and then on the backpack. Again, you can just kind of drag your brush along the surface and it kind of just picks up all the raised vents there. And then just paint the rim basically. There we go. There's a couple of other little bits and pipes here and there, uh, which I want to do. I'm going to do some um, just under his face, under here, where like his walkie-talkie is, uh, and the other pipe round here. But we'll come back with the next colour in a moment. Right, so there we go. The silver is all done. I've done the backpack pieces. Uh, I've done the pipes, and of course I've done the keys and everything, and a couple of pipes up here as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the sleeve of the book here. I'm going to paint that corn red. Uh, and then the face itself I'm going to paint. Uh, it's called Bugman's Glow. I think it used to be called uh, Rat Skin Flesh. So the corn red first of all, this one's going to be a very very quick. Corn red it is a base colour. So this should go on very quickly. There we go. And then I'm going for um, Bugman's Glow on the face. So, I really need to learn to keep this in focus. So, Bugman's Glow is quite dark, fleshy colour. Um, and although it is dark, it does work quite well when you paint it um, in conjunction with a couple of other colours. So, let's get some of that out. So with this I am just going up to the edge of the mask that he's essentially wearing. And there we go. Right, and I think we're pretty much ready for washes now. So there we go, I've just done a quick couple of touch-ups. You can see I've done the uh, red pipes along his head. So, I've got a couple of washes that I'm now going to apply to different parts um, of the model. Uh, and this is where it's now going to take the longest to dry basically, once all these washers are in place, this is going to take the longest. So first of all, I'm going to use Null Oil now, I'm using the shade one, not the gloss one. Uh, the gloss one's really cool if you're doing lots of metals and stuff, but in this instance I'm not. Uh, the Null Oil is going to be purely to darken the pipes down. So, using a larger brush, by large I mean not the small layer brush basically. Uh, just add a layer of wash to the pipes. And I'm also going to do the purity seals as well. I love GW washes, but the big tubs they're an absolute nightmare to keep open and not spill. 
so top tip here if you've got some blue tack stick some blue tack underneath it when you stick it down So I'm also putting the null oil on the purity seal, just the seal, the wax seal itself, not the uh, not the actual strip. And then obviously the couple of bits of metal there, I will put the null oil wash on as well. and of course the rest of the pipes there as well. And just a tiny bit on there just to set off and pick out those two silver bits in his head. So that's it for the null oil. Um, next up I am going to use seraphim sepia. I'm going to use seraphim sepia on all of the gold. Um, a lot of people like Agrax, I like sepia though because it's a little bit warmer. Um, the brown's a lot richer than what Agrax is. So the sepia I'm going to apply to all the gold sections. Now with the sepia, it doesn't mind. It doesn't matter so much if you get a little bit on the robes, because the robes themselves are actually going to have Agrax on them. So I'm also going to put some sepia in the book. You can see there on the chest plate, especially the uh, sepia really, really richens up the gold. Uh, Seraphim sepia works very, very well uh, with Retributor armor. So again, like I said, it doesn't matter too much if you get any of the sepia on the Zandri dust because we will be going over the Zandri dust with Agrax anywhere. And that is almost all the gold as well actually. I'm sorry I've knocked the camera out of focus once again. There we go. Now before we move on to the Agrax, uh, there is another wash to apply. And that is Reichland Flesh Shade. Uh, and that is going on the face. So Reichland Flesh Shade, it's a very ready wash. It's not as red as Carabao Crimson, uh, obviously, but it, it is very ready kind of flesh color as well. So I'm gonna need a tiny bit of this one just to go over the Bugman's Glow on the face. Now it will darken it down a lot But it does work in a little bit of faith. And that's it for the Rankin Flesh Tone. And then lastly is Agrax Earth Shade. And again, I am using the shade, not the gloss. Uh, you don't want glossy robes. Gloss washers are brilliant, but they have the uses. So I'm just going to show you the front of this. And again, like with the Drakenhof Nightshade at the beginning, if you just apply it, you can see it sinking into all the crevices. And just picking out all the details. Let's see if I can get that to focus a bit more. There we go.
and then the same on this side. And there we go. I'm going to go right round and do the rest of it, but you can see there where it's just sinking into the crevices. Maybe just drag that down a little bit there. But yeah, get a nice even spread on it, and I'll come back once all this is dry. Right, so most of the washes have almost dried, but whilst that's going on, Going to do some work on the sword and we're basically going to paint it up like a force sword so i'm going to have lots of bits of lightning on it and the way i do this is with temple guard blue it's a very very bright blue um quite intense and, and i think it looks good uh, for lightning effects so just to water it down and you want to use a small layer brush and um, we'll just get back in focus if I can. There we go. So what I'm going to do on the sword is basically paint uh, some lightning. I don't know how much you can see of that on camera but I'm basically just doing it very very fine. It's actually quite hard to get this very neat, so just take your time, very, very light strokes. And obviously the paint being a bit watered down does help it a lot. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to flow. You don't want it too thin though, because when it's too thin it just won't paint on. a slight well, I'm not the best at this but I think it looks all right it's better than leaving a plane now obviously the more time you take I think the better you can get this to look um, but like I said I'm, I'm not great at this And just highlight the edge of the sword on the way down the sides. And slight bit in the middle there as well. And then I'm basically gonna go over that um, using Ulthwan Grey. Just really really make it pop uh, and stand out. So again watering it down. Um, and despite me having a small layer brush here, I am actually going to get an even smaller brush. Now, I'm not using a Games Workshop brush for this, I've got another one here that's actually quite small. So I'm just going to use this. So again, water the paint down so that it's nice and fine. stuck on the end of my brush just kind of paint again over the top of where you've done blue just 
to help it stand out a little bit and I'm not overly happy with this it, it's really frustrating because this is something I want to look good but I struggle to get it to look good and it's simply because I'm not that steady with my hands I've got ginormous hands nah, I'm not happy with that bit there at all very light highlight up at the tip there especially there we go I think that's pretty pretty alright so next up we'll start highlighting the other colors let's go for the green and the gold next right so next up we're gonna highlight all the greens with moot green very very bright green um, essentially though I'm pretty much going to dry brush this so I'm just using a medium layer brush uh, and all I'm going to do is very similar to what we did with the silver and just drag the brush over the surface of the green it's kind of a I don't even know how to describe this technique it's not light enough to be dry brushing it's a bit heavier but it's light enough that it just picks up the, uh, the raised parts of the pipes. So on the camera it looks a little bit heavy there at the top where it, it is pretty evenly spread out. And it's a, quite bright and intense, so I quite like that. And before I start doing the same thing on the other side, I've got a fair amount of paint on my paintbrush, and I'm just going to paint the surfaces of the purity seals. Really makes them pop. And do the same with the purity seal on this side and the ones on the back there we go and then of course finish the pipes off Don't let your brush get too dry because then you end up damaging it. But there, I'm fairly happy with that. Next though, we're going to move on to the golds. And you need a little bit bigger brush to this because this you will be dry brushing. And I'm going to be using Necron Compound, which is a dry paint. Uh, it's incredibly thick and almost like a sponge. So I'll get a nice big brush, get plenty of paint on, and then literally cut that Oh, I'm not dropping paints. I will show you how to do it here. So, you can see there I've got a fair amount of paint on. I'm totally blocking out all the shadows and light. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is, until there's almost no colour coming off there, there's just a tiny bit now. And then I'm going to dry brush or, or very lightly pull the silver over the gold and believe it or not the silver on top of the gold works phenomenally well so you just need tiny tiny amounts like very very lightly with this like barely even a touch because the, the pigment in Necron compound is so strong that you barely need a touch for it to highlight and believe it or not the silver on the gold silver highlight in the gold I would never have thought it in a million years but I saw this online and it just it looks brilliant and Lucy's actually redone 
all of our stone cast. So there we go, that's all done. You can actually see a little bit of the silver on the edge here. And in particular on the sword down here as well, and I have done it right round. Uh, the chest, you can see where it's glowing quite a bit on the chest. And of course on the uh, helmet plate up here, it looks almost white on camera actually. So, next thing to do is going to be to start and touch up the face a little bit before we do the robes last. And the reason I'm doing the robes last is because I, I, I don't like doing the robes and I'd rather do them last and then see the finished product rather than getting frustrated halfway through. So, uh, the next colour that we're going to use is Cadian Flesh Tone, I believe it is. Yes, so, what you want to do after you've thinned it out a little bit, and uh, here's the shade of it, is we're just going to almost paint the raised parts of the face. But what we're going to do is it's going to, again, it's sort of that heavy dry brush, but with a lot more paint, so you are painting it on still but so that you're not going into the recessed areas anywhere near as deeply. It's hard to get a decent angle on it actually and still keep the light on it. So there we go, I'm pretty happy with that. And Bugman's Glow with Raglan Flesh and Cadian Flesh Tone makes flesh very easy. It's it's not hard at all, but I'm gonna go this one step further and just touch it up a little bit lighter um, by using uh, Kislev Flesh, which is a lighter flesh tone again. Um, but it's still not, it's not like as bright as like Bleach Bone uh, or Shabti Bone or whatever it is now. Um, it looks almost the same as Cadian Flesh Tone, but a tad lighter. Uh, it's not quite as orange, it's more it's more yellowy. So again, I'm going to use pretty much the same effect. Um, almost like a, a, a kind of light dry brush. Just to pick off like the cheek there, the nose, the tops of the eyebrows. And then of course down to his chin at that side as well. Now one thing I have noticed, he does have a little bit of a gem uh, in the centre of his head, which I didn't realise until after we've done this. So I'll touch that up green. But we're also going to do his, uh, he's got a little bit of a beard in there. So we are going to do that, but before I do that, uh, we're going to do his mouth. So to do the mouth, all I'm going to do is put a tad Carabao Crimson uh, in between his lips basically, just to show the pinkiness um, that is his, you know, his tongue and basically the inside of his mouth. And it's just a, a tiny, tiny bit of red wash. I mean, you probably can't even see it on the brush there, and it's just a tiny bit there inside of his mouth. And that's it. So, I'm going to very quickly do the gem with um, Warpstone Glow. Uh, like I said, I do like my greens, especially on my Blood Angels. And then I'll do a spot of moot green in the middle of that as well. So I'll just thin it down ever so slightly. And 
There we go. So what else have we got left to do? We've got his beard. And we've got the robes and then I want to do a little bit of work on his eyes. So let's grab some more colours and we'll move on to those. Right, so next up we're going to do what little of the beard we can actually see. Uh, and for this I'm going to use Dawnstone, which is a very light grey. Uh, and it does cover over the flesh colours reasonably well considering it is a light um, layer paint. Now, being very careful with this here. Because like I said, and you probably noticed as well when I paint, my hands are huge and it's very difficult sometimes to get things where I want them so I'm sorry if I knock some stuff out of the shadow and there we go we'll add a little bit of um, Palette Witch Flesh to that in a few moments once that's dry, but what I'm going to do next uh, is I'm going to jump back to the eyes and what I'm going to do actually is also try and reposition the light. Yeah, that's a bit better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some enchanted blue, which is one of the first blues that we use, but I'm going to water it down about halfway. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to use this as a kind of rich blue wash for his eyes. Um, I'm going to try and get the eyes to look like they're, they're glowing. Now obviously this is a small layer brush and I'm probably still going to not quite get it how I want it. Now that is actually quite thick and watery so I'm just going to try and lift some more of it out. I use my brush to absorb. It's probably a little bit too watery, I made it there. And just put a little bit of blue glow in his eyes. And then we can touch that up ever so slightly with just a, a dab of Temple Guard blue, which is the really bright blue that we used on the sword. So. What you want to do with this is not actually paint the eye itself, it is paint like literally just under the eye. Or at least what I'm trying to. There we go. Really like that glowing effect that we've got going on there. And if you want to go the extra hog, and I'm going to try and do it, but I'm a bit tedious with it. I'm about to do the Pallid Witch Flesh for the beard. I'm going to try and put a tiny dot of Pallid Witch Flesh in the center of his eye just to represent his pupil coming through. Or at least the highest intensity of glow. dry before you can get it onto the eye. There we go. And then very gently pick off the highlights of the beard. Focus again. I'm pretty happy with that. But what I'm going to do is use the watered down enchanted blue 
uh, that I've got here to basically do the same kind of effect in the center of his hand here and on the buttons there so that was the watered down enchanted blue now if you're really clever you could probably do this bit with an airbrush but I ain't that good with an airbrush Just picking off the raised bits there. To essentially show the glow. And then Pallid Witch Flesh. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix the Pallid Witch Flesh with a tiny bit of the Temple Guard Blue. Just so that it's not totally white. So almost last, we're going to highlight the robes. Alright, so lastly we're going to start highlighting the robes up. Now this for me, personally as a painter, is something that I struggle with. And I think the model's looking quite good so far, so I'll show you how to get started um, and then I'll probably finish most of it off camera uh, and come back at the end of this colour. So the colour I'm using is a Shabti Bone, uh, which is reasonably light. Um, but it's the darker of the bone colours. I've watered it down so it's about 70-30 paint. Um, I'm going to start first of all by just painting the edges of the robes. And you just want to paint all the, the, you know, the highest parts of the robes first. then what you want to do is as it's watered down a little bit you want to try and blend it out so that it gets a little bit thinner and more watery and the rest of the colour from underneath shines through a little bit and see this is where I struggle So I'm just trying to obviously leave the crevices and the darker bits alone. I was trying to pick the raised bits out. So you can do it that way with the robes and then with the skulls as well. So obviously I'm, I'll do the rest of the robes. Uh, off camera, but same with the skull there. So you're just picking up the highlighted or the highest raised parts, and what you want to do is you want to cover probably about two thirds of the surface that you're going to be painting because then we're going to come back in with another color to highlight it up as well. So, again, same with the uh, insignia there. Right, so I'm going to crack on with the rest of these robes, it's probably going to take us about 10-15 minutes to do it and then we'll come back in a few moments. So there we go, I've done the first layer of highlighting, now as you can see I've watered it down and I've put two or three layers on just to try and build it up and get it, you know, with a bit of uh, depth on there. So the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same again 
um, but highlight a little bit less. But this time I'm going to use Screaming Skull because it's a little bit lighter. So again, I've watered this down, um, and what you want to do is just start doing the very tips. Uh, for example, just the center piece of there, as it's the lightest. Just the edges of the robes. And then for example down the back. So then what you can do as you get a bit less paint on your brush, you can kind of start to blend it in a little bit with the water. Just to soften the edges out and then once you've done all of that um, and including the tops of the skulls, so we'll just do this one here for example, so we'll go across the eyebrows and then just a little bit on each side of the top of the skull. And then the banner. Same with the purity seals. In fact, I didn't do them ones yet, so. Again, just picking the edges off with the screaming skull. And then where it's raised going sideways as well. So I'll touch up the rest of that and we'll come back with that in a minute. Alright so next up is we're going to do the purity seal uh, ins inscriptions. Um, what I've got here is a mix of null oil and a little tiny bit of screaming skull. So as you can see it's a very kind of warm paley grey. I'm just going to use the small layer brush and we'll focus back in on the Libby, there we go is use it to put the inscription on here now I'm not writing anything in particular if, you, if your hands are stable enough to get any actual writing on there then absolutely go for it but Unfortunately, I'm not that stable to be able to manage it. It actually looks, uh, you can't really see much because of the light of the camera, um, but it is definitely across there. And there you go, just putting some small lines running across it so that it looks like the inscription. And there we go. I am pretty damn happy with him, but he needs a base, so let's move on to the base. Right, so next up is the basin. So, this is what I started with, a standard plain 40mm base and then what I've done is I managed to find some uh, cork coasters uh, from B&M. So you basically rip them up into loads of little bits, super glue them on or hot glue whatever your preference is and then all I've done is put a little bit of PVA glue around the rest of the edges um, and then used some sharp sand. Uh, that I got from the local builders merchant and believe it or not when I started in the hobby three years ago I bought one bag I'm still using it now so it goes to show just how far it goes once that's all dry though spray it up black and you get something like this so how easy is it to create that base literally glue, ripped cork, PVA and sand spray it black pretty quick you can do a lot of them 
in really quick succession. So, to paint this up, I'm, I got some um, really cheap acrylics actually from the range. Uh, you can get cheap acrylics in B&M, Home Bargains, probably the Pound Shop, Wilkinson's, things like that. Um, and I use the cheap acrylics for basin and scenery. So this is the one I'm getting from the range. It's called Storm Cloud. It's basically slightly off-white. Um, and I picked up the grey. So, I'm going to do... I've actually got four bases here because I'm doing another squad of uh, interceptors at the same time, which you will see in a battle report soon. So I'm going to do four bases at once because I've got three interceptors and the librarian. So what I'm, what I'm doing is just going back with the dry brushing technique. So I've got a load of grey on my brush, wipe most of it off, and then use a nice thick brush. And you can see there as you work the brush in, it starts to pick off all of the raised areas and it starts to look quite rocky. So I'm going to keep going with this because I've got another couple to do. I might as well do them on camera and show you how quick and easy they are to do. Now the interceptors I did decide not to do the, um, the clear base. I, I liked them in the pictures when I saw them, I thought, yep, they look great. Practicality, I don't like them because the, the, you have to glue the marines to them. Um, so I've decided not to use them. Um, if you could disconnect them like what you can, like the jet bike, Reva jet bikes and stuff like that, I probably would have used them um, as they would have been a lot easier to transport as well. But as it stands, no, I wasn't, wasn't a fan. So I decided against them and I've just basically built some rocky bases for them to be jumping over. So you can see that I'm actually nearly done with three and it's only taken me what a couple of minutes if that. And then the last one. There we go. Now the black spray that I used, uh, believe it or not, it was from the pound shop. Uh, they do do some matte and gloss black spray for a pound. Uh, they do some really dark grey primer, which is ideal if you're doing a lot of rocks or, or ruins as well. So, there you go. Now what I'm going to do now is now I'm going to use some white. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the white straight on my brush on top of the grey and see the two layers there. Um, and what I'm going to do is when I work it in, Get a little bit of the grey on it as well. So that when I dry brush this, that it's not brilliant stark white, it's an incredibly light grey. And it just picks off the highest edges now. And obviously you can see I'm really getting stuck in there with the brush because of how little paint is on there, it literally just picks up on the, the top surfaces. So. Try to give that one just a little bit more. There. And then the last one, some cork off there there we go so believe it or not that was how quick them bases are to do however if you want to keep going what we're going to do next is put a little bit of PVA glue on it. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some flock from Woodland Scenics. Now I bought this bag for about a tenner, well over two years ago, and I've based most of my Eldar with it. 
um, most of them are Space Marines. It's basically really fine um, flock. So again, PVA glue, which you can pick up in Wilkinson's Pound Shop. It's normally in the uh, Kitty Craft section of like Home Bargains and B&M and stuff. So all I'm going to do is put some PVA glue there, just in different places basically, where I think there might be a little bit of moss grown. So on the front edge there. And then all I'm going to do is basically sprinkle the flock on top like that. Just give it a bit of a shake and a tap. And there you go. So, I'll do that with the rest quickly. So, let's have some there, probably quite a bit there. A little bit on the top and some down there. And it's as easy as that. And the last one There we go. Now believe it or not, as awesome as that looks, I'm going to go one further. So what I'm going to do is actually add some static grass. Now the static grass I use is by Army Painter. And there's not much of this one left but I have got a couple of other uh, tubs of it. Uh, and again this goes really far, I think this is only the second ever tub. Um, and if you follow the channel, you know how many armies I've got and how much I've done. So, yeah. Now, what I'm going to do for static grass is you kind of want to add it in, in between crevices, um, top of outcrops, things like that. So, for this one, uh, let's go for that little gap there. Now, what I'm going to use is I'm using Gorilla Super Glue. You can use normal super glue. Don't buy the cheap one from the pound shop. It's really runny. It will go everywhere on your base and it'll make a mess. Gorilla Super Glue is really thick, it doesn't run anywhere, um, and it means that you can be very accurate with where you want your grass to be. And then all you want to do then is pick a clump of it up, sprinkle it on like that, let's give it a little bit of a tap, and then literally the same thing as what we just did, turned over. Give it a tap, and there you go. So we'll uh, do the rest of them. Right, so here we go. The base is almost done. The only thing I haven't done, uh, which I don't really need to show you in this video, is paint the black rim around the edge of the base. So we need to get this guy glued on now. Uh, because I'm gluing straight onto cork, obviously you want to use super glue, and what better glue than Gorilla Glue? So, put two blobs on the bottom of his feet, and obviously you notice there, I very quickly did try the positioning of his foot. There we go, we'll give that a minute or two to dry, and now uh, we'll show you the finished product.
So there we go guys, the finished Primaris Librarian. He doesn't have a name yet, but he has joined the ranks of the Blood Angels. If you can think of a cool name, let me know in the comments down below and maybe he'll get named when he hits the table. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this little paint along, painting tutorial kind of thing. It's been nice to sit with the camera and paint something up there. I've quite enjoyed painting actually. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the rest of the channel and we'll see you again soon.